Hi, I'm Kaylee. I'm Steve. And we are celebrating our six month nomad anniversary. Yay! Yay! <laughs> and so, what we wanted to do is we wanted to list off some stats for you guys and talk about our three biggest kind of learning things um, since we've been on the road officially for six months. <laughs> We have hit 14 states. 14 states. Uh, about 10,000 miles towing. Um, we have almost 22,000 miles on the truck, um, which is crazy because the truck's practically brand new. Oh, we got the truck truck in July. <laughs> no, June. 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 Yeah. So right when we so, started. <laughs> it's good miles. Good yeah. miles. Well loved. Well loved. <laughs> um, we've had one blown tire. On the, on the trailer, which caused no damage, thank goodness. Yeah. Um, but we learned we got a tire pressure monitoring system from that, because that was a big one. Yep. Um, so one blown tire, we had to get two new truck tires. because We didn't rotate properly. We've had the, the back stabilizers replaced three times. Uh, uh, three of them. Three of them, <laughs> because he ripped two off and then I ripped one off uh, when I was towing it. <laughs> We've only had Lena in the shop one time. Um, so we did that in Tucson because we had an issue with our slide, um, which they were able to fix it, no problem. And that's kind of been the... That's been the... Yeah. Really. Most so good. Yeah. And so the truck and the trailer... Have been good. Awesome. They've yep. been so good to us. We have well loved them um, and they continue going strong. Yep. It, our average stay is four nights. Um, we've also stayed, our longest duration at one spot was a month, which we did in Phoenix. Um, and then our shortest is overnights. Um, so we did an overnight in Home Depot parking lot. Yep. We did an overnight in the Cracker Barrel, uh, Walmart, and the Lazy Days Tucson parking lot waiting to go into service. Yep. So not too bad uh, with the overnights. We get quite asked this quite a lot. Um, so we go to the grocery store about every four days. Um, kind of coincides when we move spots, really. Yeah. Um, so we're able to yeah. plan out our dinners and lunches are kind of the big, the big to do's. The big um, breakfast we kind of go pretty easy, um, yeah. but grocery store about every four days and laundry. We haven't had any real issues with laundry. No, uh, probably about once a week though. Mm -hmm. It's about average. Two to three loads. Um, and that's about it. Usually we can get in, get out. We're done in an hour and a half. Yeah, and we've only done the laundromat a handful of times. So most of the places we go yeah. have a laundry facility and they're pretty nice. Actually, one place in um, Louisiana, it was free laundry. Yep. Uh, so that was nice. Uh, but the laundry has been pretty, pretty easy. Good. No big issues there. <laughs> so since we launched, uh, we've reorganized the inside, the outside, the truck. <laughs> Storage. A thousand you times. We've probably touched it. <laughs> yeah, you know, like when you hit the road, like when you're first starting off, you're like, oh, we need all this stuff. And then you actually hit the road and you're like, no, we don't need that. So we start purging a lot. You've reorganized the back of the truck. Oh, I've gotten rid of some stuff and yeah. I've done the truck probably six times. Yeah, and you, least. yeah, and dumbed down the tools, right? Like really oh, yeah. simplified the tools. Oh, yeah. um, Cause we haven't really needed a whole, a no. whole bunch yet. No. Um, and hopefully not. Um, but yeah, reorganization and like the back of the trailer where the kids are, we've organized that a, like just several times, a ton of times. And we've kind of changed it for when you're working back there and not, yeah. um, but reorganization and still minimizing. So you figure we leave a house, you know, you purge galore and then we go on a trailer and we continue to purge. Um, it's kind of, how much stuff do you really need yeah. to live day to day? Yeah. And so. the answer is you don't need a lot. I was telling a girlfriend that we had, kept getting rid of stuff and she was like amazed that we could still yeah. be getting rid of stuff um so it just kind of makes you reevaluate what's what's important and what you do actually need what was your favorite camping spot that we've had so far uh one of them was tucson uh the koa in tucson is actually right behind lazy days mm -hmm. the only reason we stayed there was because of the service <laughs> yeah because we, we were taking lena we weren't in. planning on it but we did yeah tucson was pretty cool mm -hmm. and we had what was it an orange tree right uh, next to us grapefruit or orange tree. yeah it, i think it was a grapefruit yeah they weren't ripe yet no, um but, but i could it was see it kind of cool that they had fruit trees all over the place mm -hmm. so in season it would be kind of cool because you could go 
pick a grapefruit if you want to in the morning and yeah. cut it up and eat it. So good. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, my favorite campsite that we've had was at Sunshine Key in the Keys, um, and I loved it because you're you're literally on this little island by itself. <laughs> by itself. So you walk a hundred feet and then there's like the ocean side um, with all the, yep. the sand and you can enjoy that. They had a pool, they had activities and um, the kids and I got on our paddle board and we went over to Conk Island. So, which was really cool. You just kind of paddled over there and there was hermit crabs and sea urchins and like, it was just a really cool uh, little location that, yep. that we really liked. Tightest spots to get in and out of with oh, our trailer. Geez, just on <laughs> Naples and Fort Myers. Yeah. They were literally the tightest spots we've ever had. Mm -hmm. I think next time I will find a boondocking spot. Yeah. Because apparently down in those areas, you have so many snowbirds and they literally give you about six feet to get pulled in. I think one spot we missed a car by. It was like. Paper thin. Paper thin. Paper thin just because the parking was right behind it and we were missing another trailer that was next to us and it was just it was kind of nerve-wracking but once you're there you're good then yeah. the nerves kick back up when you had to leave yeah yeah so, and when we pulled out we there was i think three of us helping you yeah, just as like spotters i had spotters on the front where the truck was um, i was on the back kaylee was on the back i think yeah. one of our other neighbors was on another side <laughs> uh, i think jeremiah was out there spotting too <laughs> Um, I mean, it was literally less than probably four inches that I had to, you, you couldn't make a mistake within four inches of yeah. going one way or another. Um, so that's just how tight it was. Yeah. And then Fort Myers was also really tight. Um, oh yeah. We actually hit the guy next to us. His awning was out when we were turning in. It was fine, no damage. Um, but it was really tight getting in. But luckily they left before we did. So getting out was getting out was, was easy a piece of cake just backed out mm -hmm. um first time i've ever had to just back out of a spot <laughs> and this was a pull through site <laughs> yeah this was a pull through site um it was it was another old park mm -hmm. um but it was electrical was out by the street and i literally could not even turn the truck when it was by itself in between the poles yeah. so i knew we weren't getting the trailer through there yeah so yeah. Yeah, those but, were and and really i think since we've been on uh, this side of Florida to the ocean side, the spots seem to be wider mm -hmm. and golf sides actually tighter. Yeah. What has been your favorite thing or place that we've like visited in these past six months? One of them was actually going to the NASCAR race in Las Vegas, in Las Vegas. the truck race, yeah. and then being able to tour Daytona just this past week yeah, that was, was cool. actually awesome because I actually missed out on some of the other stuff that I wanted to do mm -hmm. just because of work. Um, my other favorite was the Oak Alley plantation in yep. Louisiana. Yep. It was just like, it was, it was our beautiful. first plantation and it was, it lived up to every hope and dream that I had seen, <laughs> that I had wanted for it. The picture is like, it was beautiful. It was interesting to learn about the slave trade and everything there and talking about with the kids about that history. My other favorite place that we went to and did something at was the Grand Canyon. Uh, so we we were in Phoenix or we were in uh, Lake Pleasant and so we drove up uh, to Grand Canyon yep. and we actually went and did a, like a mile hike in me. under the rim um, to the Ooh Ah point and the Ooh Ah, oh, Steve kept ah, calling yes. it the Hoo Ha. <laughs> the Ooh Ah point. The Ooh Ah. So we went to Ooh Ah point um, and it was it was gorgeous. Oh my God. Like, and you get close to the edge and um, it just takes your breath away and makes, it made my legs like woozy and everything, yeah. but it was, I if really you get enjoyed small it. small kids who love climbing on everything, <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the hike down was cool. We got to see the burrows as they walked by. Yep. Um, it was just, it, it was everything I had hoped for. I want to go back. I want to go spend more yeah. time by the Grand Canyon. Favorite food that we've had along our adventures. Oh. And we've had a lot of food out. <laughs> um, we've eaten out probably way too much. Yeah. Uh, but probably one of my favorites was in Lake Charles, Louisiana at Daryl's. Yeah. Um, there, I just had this pole boy. It was Daryl's pole boy. I'm not really, really sure what's on <laughs> it, but it was delicious. Um, good. I would go back just for that. <laughs> yeah, and it was a cool, like, it's like a bar, but it's really like a family yeah. restaurant. And you walk in, and we happened to be there on a Saturday, and LSU was playing, and so it was fun. They had it on all the screens, and you got quick service, yep. and it was it was really good. It was good. fun. It was yeah. fun. I mean, there's there's been a lot of good food, but that one little sandwich was delicious. 
and I've had some good jambalaya and uh -huh. everything else on our journey, but that was you that was a that. great po' boy. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Um, oh, it's yours. So mine was in New Mexico. Um, so for those that know me, I love Mexican food. I love spice. Um, and so the La Posta de Mazilla, um, in just outside of Las Cruces in Mazilla, um, which is an old Spanish town, um, oh. that was the best Mexican I've ever had in my life. It was, it good. was it so was good. good. It reminded me of the Colorado Mexican food. Um, the whole atmosphere was beautiful. I just, I loved everything about it. And then um, I also loved the beignets in uh, New Orleans. Oh, I'm sorry, beignets. in Nolens. Um, it was what are they called? awesome. Beignets. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, don't let me order them <laughs> ever for anyone. That name up too. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I, I call them the Sobapia of the South. <laughs> so we're, we're we really like Mexican food, and it tastes just like a Sobapia. It does, yeah. So sorry for any disrespect to anyone that really likes them, but they're delicious. We approve. <laughs> we approve, but I, I think it tastes like a little Sobapia too. Mm -hmm. so. Just missing that honey. Oh, <laughs> So we want to talk about the three top things that we've learned in this past six months. Um, so I think we both agree on this is we need to slow it down. Uh, so yeah. we have been moving fast um, every three or four days and it's because we don't have like we're on a year tr crunch. So we're, we're, on a timeline. we're on a timeline. So we're trying to fit in as much as possible while still exploring the areas. Yeah. And but we've both agreed we need to slow down, um, not stay a month. Yeah. at every place because that's too long um, but maybe five nights yep. you know six nights would be give us enough time to still get the school and the work done um, but also to thoroughly explore the areas and enjoy it and not feel so rushed yeah um, I would, I would. agreed agreed yeah. and i and this is coming from the kids also yeah the, the kids express their of uh, moving so much mm -hmm. and so quickly that we took it to heart so yeah. yeah yeah and so we've started this the second half will be a little bit slower um and yeah, so we're just kind of trying to find that balance. Yep. Okay, number two, uh, number two thing that our big takeaways is getting the work homeschooling routine down yes. early. Um, we, I think the hardest thing for me as a first time homeschooling parent was getting my expectations of what the kids are gonna do um, in <laughs> like, and not, I don't know, just not being so distracted. I don't know, it, the first two months of homeschooling was really rough. Um, and then trying to balance like me working on it and then giving him enough space so he could get his work done. Well, and it, it, it was kind of, it kind of hampered a little bit more when we hit cooler weather too. Yeah. Cause I could work outside before mm -hmm. and it wasn't that big of a deal. And I could just, I could just, nah, whatever. It, it was pretty easy. Yeah. Once I had to move into the trailer with rain and everything else, we kind of, we had another hiccup that we hadn't really perceived. Yeah. And I think we overcame it pretty well in the last couple months. Yeah, yeah, I so. think so. And and again, we kind of got into a school routine of what subjects we cover each day and schooling and things like that too. Um, but what we ended up doing and what's worked so far is once the kids are up and out of the back room, Steve turns it to his office. And yeah. so that helps a lot because then he's isolated. He can close his door, you know, do what he needs to do. And then we can get the homeschooling done. Um, and then I can kick the kids outside. They can go play and then I can get my work done. And then probably the biggest lesson is don't leave homeschooling up to me. <laughs> I'm not going to read the material. He doesn't follow all the same <laughs> steps. Our third thing. Yeah, and I'm guilty of this. I think I was the big pusher is feeling obligated to experience everything no matter the cost because we're there. Um, so we would, oh, when we, we first yeah, started we, on the adventures, we were doing a lot of touristy things, which costs money. Um, it costs quite a bit. Actually. And it was like, it was fun and we experienced a lot, um, but it just got to be too much. Um, and so we need, to, we kind of reined it in a little bit and started doing things just a little bit more cost friendly yeah, we still different. got to do fun things and experience things but not always 
um, dipping too much into our pocketbook. Yeah. Doing, I like the national parks when we can get in there to yeah, explore the, the areas nice. and state parks um, too. Yeah, we, we've opted out of doing certain things. Mm -hmm. like just cause you like, I think the big change too is when you go full time, it's, this isn't a vacation, this is life. Like yep. if we were in a bricks and sticks place, we wouldn't be, doing we wouldn't be going out all the time and spending all this money. And so we would be, you know, more conscious about it. And so, you know, this is our life and we're doing this right now. And we just, we still want to experience it, but yep. um, not completely throw all of our yeah. <laughs> things to I the mean, side. Yeah. You gotta got to work it all out. Yeah. There's a happy balance somewhere. Right. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this next um, six months and continuing on. Um, hopefully we'll get to the East Coast, kind of that Midwest or Mideast. Midwest. Um, Midwest is what they call it. Midwest. The Midwest. East, East Coast. Yeah. Um, and kind of experiencing that. Um, we have a lot more family out there, so I think we'll be doing yep. more family things, which yep. will be great. And um, and then we'll also be heading back to Colorado for a little bit too. All right, well with that, thank you guys so much. Uh, hit that like button and subscribe button and we'll chat with you later.